Oh, man, you know, I was telling you this offseason, you know, I kept preaching, hide, hide, hide. It's his time to shine. You know, there's a reason Trent Balk hand-selected him to be the heir apparent to Frank Gore. And I've been saying all along, I knew the, I knew one thing was, you know, the right side of the line was going to be a little uh, makeshift. But here's the thing. They shifted over tight ends to the right side last mm-hmm. night. And that was genius. The, the play calling, unbelievable. The main MVP, for my estimation, was Eric Mangini. Last year, we, we did not bring any pressure. And it, it, the defense just felt dull. But now with Mangini, he's going to bring in... A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure for the quarterback, a lot of blitzes, but also balancing between that uh, blitzing and coverages. So I think that's key to success for us. Are you listening? How sweet it is! <laughs> Vikings were never even in this game right from the beginning. The 49ers totally dominated. And wouldn't you know it, the media races right in to give the Vikings some excuses. It was unbelievable. Well, AP hasn't played in over a year, and he was a little bit rusty. Uh, Naval Bowman hasn't played in a year. Why? He hasn't. He, in fact, he's not played way before Adrian Peterson's quit playing. So what is the problem? Why wasn't Naval laying on the sideline going, oh, I just don't feel like playing. Adrian Peterson looked confused and dazed. Here's what the media forgot to do. Adrian Peterson has never dominated the 49ers. And, but everybody says, well, that's because back in the past, the 49ers had all those Hall of Fame players and they could dominate Adrian. Here's the problem with that line of thinking. To begin with, Trent Baalke does not draft trash. Not all the time. So, of course, he had players. We've got players. They just can't believe we have players. Another thing, too, I want to draw this connection. Since Adrian Peterson came into the league, Jim Tom Sula has been in the league. You see the connection? Jimmy T knows what it takes to stop Adrian Peterson. He'll never admit it, but you know that's got to be the case. And then there's Teddy Bridgewater. Oh, Teddy, where is his game? Rumor had it, as the media would tell you, Teddy Bridgewater had some problem with a date standing him up the night before the game and was not in a good mood. Ooh, that's not even the worst thing that you heard. The worst thing that I heard was, (laughs) this one is just shameless. Well, the Viking starters haven't played any snaps since, oh gosh knows when. Listen, the starters had the same amount of allotted time as every other team did coming into the preseason. If the Vikings weren't ready to play, then why didn't their moms call in sick and say they couldn't come in today? Give me a break with all these excuses. They just refused to give the 49ers any credit on the win. That game should have been more like 30 something four or 34, 37. I kept counting up how many times did we see the flag at the ground. If it wasn't for all those flags, that game wouldn't even been that close. So no matter what Viking team showed up on this game, they were gonna get their hat handed to them. I'm a little bit emotional about this game. Let me calm down. Breathe, Ron, breathe. I just can't stand the disrespect. Here's another thing. If indeed the Vikings play the Detroit Lions this week, if they beat the Lions, the media owes us an apology for that total disrespect job at the end of this game. That wasn't right. That was terrible. And, ah, here's another thing, too. I said this, and I don't want anybody to get mad at me about this, but I said Reggie Bush would last about four weeks into the season. <laughs> I was wrong, wasn't I? Reggie lasted a half a game, the very first game. I know it's not funny, don't get mad at me, I'm just saying. I knew Reggie was going down. I didn't know it was gonna be so immediately. The first half of the first game, he strains his calf. Now he's on a day, was it a game to game or day to day situation, I'm not really sure. This brings up a very interesting situation though. Now, this week, during the course of practice, it's going to be Jared Hayne versus, of course, Mike Davis. Now. Let me say this about Jared first, because I know people are wondering what's going on. There's a lot of people in Australia <laughs> wondering too. Jared Hayne made a mistake. Okay, what he should have been told about this a long time ago, I don't know, I'm blaming the special teams coach. If a punt comes to you and you have to dive, let it go. Jared being the star that he is was just, he's just aggressive, he was going for it. I understand the winds were swirling that night and it was a little bit difficult. That ball took a dipper dive on him at the last second. You know, and I know, Jared Hayne does not miss the ball. 
so he missed the ball on this night. Unfortunately, I understand the largest viewing crowd, maybe in Australian history, was on hand for that game. He'll be back. Jimmy T will put him right back on that horse, and he will ride. Now, I'm thinking what's going to end up happening is Bruce Ellington, who's playing out of his mind, will split between punts and kicks. It'll be one or the other. They'll split it. Because Jared... We don't want him to lose any confidence. He's got to build up. Every rep he takes is going to make him closer to the machine he's going to be. This guy's got too much potential to let it lie on the bench. Get him back out there, Jimmy T. <laughs> now, here's the thing I really enjoy the most. I have a plan. Put Jared out. I'd rather see him do this more often anyway. Put Jared out on those smoke routes. The smoke route is this. The receiver steps away from cap, just maybe one step beyond the line of scrimmage. Hits, he faces Cap, Cap hits him with the ball immediately. This puts Jared in an ideal situation. Why? Because the first guy that comes at Jared is going to be a victim, there's no doubt about it. Jared will step right past him, and now, if he's got any room going downfield, you know how he is. That could be a TD. Uh, I gotta call Jimmy T on the phone and tell him these things. Also, Cap. Looks so good in this game. The haters are still trying to hate on him. But number one, Cap's instruction for the last several months, they have got to be delighted with what they see. Cap had form this night. He made a couple of small mistakes, but Cap has not played that much in a real life situation because all preseason long, they didn't do anything with Cap. Cap. The footwork was right. He was stepping up into the pocket. He was taking his reads, going through his progressions, hitting his receivers. His first instinct to run was not there. He was hitting people. He was a quarterback in the pocket, and he still utilized that great athleticism as it was. I was so excited. I was sitting there. It makes me want to night Hello. Yeah. How about the game MVP who took the spotlight? Uh, Completely uh, off of Adrian Peterson. Uh, Carlos Hyde, baby. Oh. After one week of action, El Guapo uh, on 26 carries uh, gained 168 yards uh, and two TDs that uh, sets him on top of the league. He Bronbo. What? I wanted to do that. I wanted to talk about Carlos well, this week. Why are you getting upset? Well, I wanted to. You always. Why don't you talk to Jared Hain next week? Cause I know he'll be right back this Sunday. Okay. Okay. You okay. good with that? I'm good with that. That's cool. You promise now. All right. All right. Okay. I'll see you when you finish up. Well, don't make me wait too long. Okay. Okay. Because I know him. He just likes to... He comes in and just takes over the show. Like, I don't even count anymore. It's the MC Niner show half the time. You know what? El Guapo was off the hook this time. I mean, Carlos was kicking it, wasn't he? <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens against Pittsburgh. They're already preparing now, thinking they're going to be able to stop him by using Michael Vick as a fake <laughs> Colin Kaepernick. Okay, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> anyway, I want to get your feelings on this game versus the Minnesota Vikings for right now. Not a fan, we continue to talk about this outstanding victory, and I've got Roger. <laughs> Roger, where are you, man? Right over here, baby. Bang, bang, Niner gang. Empire Nation, baby. Stand up, Empire. What's up? I'm telling you right now, man, we're not getting any love or any respect for this, but that's okay. No. As Niner fans, we don't need it. We, we, don't can, need we go 4-0 or something like that. We know the love will be there, so it's no big deal, right? No, yeah. Still no make, doubt, man. Still Haters, they've mad. been hating on us all off season, right? Uh, yeah. In fact, you know what? I really think it's the motivating force behind that 49er play yesterday. They look inspired yesterday, did they not? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of it, that, those black jerseys, man, those are clean, weren't they? I, I mean, I love, you got your black jersey on, yeah. you know, got the black on, and you blackout yeah. was crazy. <laughs> uh, you know, they were juiced, the players were just amped, you know, they, they created this atmosphere. I think a lot of them too, Jim Tom Sula, such a good players coach. Uh, the, I think the thing is, I think they realize, you know, we got chip on our shoulder, mm. people are hating on us, mm. man. We're gonna come out and shock the world. It's Monday Night Football, mm. Kaepernick, prime time, man. Yeah. They, they had a lot of juice last night, and they just came out and, and Bowman's first game in a, a year and a half man he came out just so much energy they were all feeding off of it and it was unbelievable man unbelievable and you know cap is five that was I, I, it's a milestone but I hadn't realized cap is five and0 oh on Monday night football five and0 oh, Monday night football nine touchdowns zero interceptions you see that haters no interceptions man 
That was he was he was good, man. You know, it was fun to watch. And the Carlos Hyde show. Did you see that come from Carlos? I knew Carlos was gonna have a good night, but did you see all that coming? Oh man, you know, I I was telling you this off season. You know, I kept preaching, hide, hide, hide. It's his time to shine. You know, there's a reason Trent Balk hand selected him to be the heir apparent to Frank Gore. And I've been saying all along, I knew the I knew one thing was you know the right side of the line was gonna be a little uh, makeshift. But here's the thing, they shifted over tight ends to the right side last night mm-hmm. and that was genius the, the play calling unbelievable shifting vernon and selick and vance over to the right um to to help debbie in pairs mm-hmm. but of course they they push towards the left side that was that was the strong side <laughs> if you look at the stats this is crazy i'm a stat guy if you see yeah. uh 16 of his 26 runs yeah. were to the left sides 129 of his 168 yards were to the left side so i mean he was pushing to the left man and unbelievable he came to show why they got rid of, uh, you know, Frank. I love Gore, but hey, it's a young man's game, baby. It's a young man's game. And he's 22 years old. And yeah. now we might have the next horse in the Niner backfield, man. Oh, it, was, it was unbelievable. We're, we're all doing that, though. Everybody's like, oh, Frank, man. Thanks, Frank. But, you know, it's it, it was his time to say goodbye, man. You know? Hey, man. <laughs> Seven, $7 million for a 32-year-old guy. Like I said, I love him. But, hey, he got the money. Respect to him. You know, go get that money somewhere else. But now we got the youngster Hyde. He's cheaper. He's gonna prove himself. I mean, last night he was just flexing on him, and that's just the early, that's that's just the taste of what's to come. You know, if they can even strengthen the right side even more, if they get better, I mean, imagine you can run left, you can run le- right. It, it's unbelievable. And he's gonna set up the play action game. You know, oh. Cap didn't have to do much. He kind of played like Alex Smith. You know, used to do mm-hmm. game management type of guy. Yeah. And uh, you know, once once they start game planning on Hyde. Uh, play action pass is going to be unbelievable. So I'm hoping he can build that chemistry with Vernon and Tory, man. All right. It's coming in. It's back. Let's just go right to Cap right now. D- did Cap remind you anything of the people who've been complaining about for the last, as, when did they say he started regressing? Has it been two seasons? But did he remind you of a failure in any way in this game? Oh, no, man. You know, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you some honesty because he wasn't perfect. Of course, he wasn't no. perfect. No touchdowns. People are hating. Oh, yeah, no. T- but he, he didn't have to throw any touchdowns. Again, it was the Alex Smith type game management game. But he showed me so much growth in the pocket. Yes. His ability, his footwork. Yes. His footwork was one thing I looked at. His poise. He didn't try to run first. He was making the reads. He was taking the underneath passes. I was, oh, man, I loved it. Taking the underneath routes. Just taking what the defense gave him. He didn't always try to run. I think the regression, of course, we know injuries, the locker room dissension. Um, you know, that kind of weighed on him. But this year, he's a captain. And he knew it. He had to make changes. Um, I, I see the I see the changes he had, and they played. And, and I just also think the the play calling was was a big factor. You know, give it to Hyde, get some pressure off Kaepernick. When you got a running back that's doing that, and your line is giving you protection, any quarterback's gonna be feel confident. And um, I think really last night, I really saw the growth in Kaepernick. I hope it continues because I mean, he he can have a, a, a great season again if they game plan Hyde. They're gonna have Tory Smith. Vernon Davis, Anquan Bolden, just wide open, man. So, um, yeah, in in my eyes, I saw a lot of growth. I didn't see the regression that everybody's talking about. (laughs) I saw growth, man. I saw the growth. The footwork was amazing in the pocket. And let me tell you one thing that really hyped me. When he got knocked in the head on that run, and he gets right back up, goes right (laughs) back to work. Oh, baby, that's my my quarterback. He was Kaepernick on him like that in his head. I know he told me. I know he was probably saying, but that's, that's me. That's Kaepernick. Bang, bang, Niner gang. That was unbelievable. And he just went right back to work. All that all that working out he does has made him into a Superman. That was that was scary, man. You're right. When he popped right up like it was no big deal. Oh, so, man. man. Cap has oh. turned into a superhero, man. You <laughs> forget know, about it. I know it. I just want him to silence every single hater. I'm tired of it, man. Oh. You know, because he had such good seasons. Took us to this pro, the Super Bowl, and everybody wants you know, one bad season. And they're saying, oh, Cap this, Cap, he sucks. Sorry, you need to, you need, and some people say you put Blaine Gabbard in. Uh, Come on, man. Gabbard's a great backup, but it had gotten it's carried about away. At Cap, that point. You're right. It's it had gotten carried there's away a, at that point. Yeah. There's, there's a reason he's making 20 million a year. So, you real, know. real quickly, though. Now, with Jared Hayne, he made a slight mistake. Are you going to be okay with him? Because, you know, Reggie Bush is not going to be playing next week. You're going you're gonna to stick him right back in there? Hey, this is what I think. I actually posted about this tonight, Jared Hayne. You know, people make mistakes. I think the nerves might have got to yeah. him. Um, unfortunately, I'll give him a mulligan, but here's the thing with uh, Jared Hain, you know, the regular season's a different monster than the preseason. I think he saw that. Uh, one thing I said earlier in the, in the week before leading up, 
yeah, he had a great preseason, but he's still got a lot to learn. You know, got to get up right, got to make the smart decisions. Um, the, the game of football is a lot different than rugby. He's still got a lot to learn. He's still inexperienced. It was his first real pre- uh, game, you know, not preseason. So I think the nerves might have got to him, mm. but oh, I got tremendous faith in him because if, if you looked at it after that play, I think he signed us. He kind of settled down. Yeah. Uh, the butterflies might have worn off. Because here's the thing: he made some big catches, hit some great blocks in the backfield, and uh, he he really helped out in the blocking game. Passing wise, he had a nice little catch. I think once he gets more reps, he he'll, he'll do fine. So I'm I'm confident in him. There you go, Jared Hain getting more good votes. Hain playing, baby. Yeah. Since this is gonna be funny too, Rogers, his little girl is running around in the background. Rogers <laughs> gotta now demonstrate how uncivilized grown-ups can be. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> bang bang! Not again! You gotta even check me out. Check out my page, our SF Niners. I'm sure you do. I love you guys, love my followers. One more thing I wanna add, Ron, but I know we're out of time, but Eric Mangini and that blitz. Oh unbelievable. Unbelievable. I loved it. Bam! A victory! I got my boy JR. JR, where are you, man? I am in Nevada, California, just a little north of San Francisco. Nevada, California. I used to run across there all the time, man. <laughs> I love Nevada, just outside of San Rafael. Yep. JR, man, after that beat down, the critics, they are not giving us no love, man. You've heard what they're saying about your team, man. Why is the media still on us? They're saying, the Vikings played poorly. Nothing to do with us playing good football, but the Vikings sucked. What do you got to say about that? Well, I, I feel like the media just still wants to hate us. They don't realize what the talent we have, the, the motivation we have. I just think the media is like they're always targeting the Niners, but they don't give any credit to us. They only give credit to Navarro Bowman, who I think is a very good player, but you got to give credit to the other team, you know? Absolutely, and they need to get used to it as well. Now, Jared Hain, he did struggle a little yesterday, not much. The one drop punt is the only thing people could actually say that was a problem. But as far as the rest of the game goes, are you going to stay with Jared Hain? Do you still trust him? I mean, you haven't uh, lost any faith, have you? I have not lost any faith. I mean, that was first time jitters, first regular season game. You know, you're in front of national TV. I mean, it was just first time jitters. Uh, I do think Reggie Bush will still be the second running back, but Jared Hain, he's gonna be our main punt returner. Then backing him up, I think uh, Bruce Ellington would be a good one. But to me, people shouldn't really bash on Jared Hain. I mean, Jared Hain, that guy, that guy has a lot of potential. People shouldn't bash him on for just one fumble that was his first regular season game. So people should just calm down and just gives a Jaron Hansen credit. And can you imagine how much courage does it take to come from another country, another sport, and play in the NFL opening night? The I understand the winds were blowing as well. Uh, a little bit of a yeah, swirl and a shift on that, because come on, Jared Hain doesn't miss punts. There had to be something else going on besides that, and even beyond jitters. So I'm giving him, I'm saying, Jared, do not worry about it. You're still the man. All right. Okay, and mention the defensive players. Outside of Bowman, I, I was just thinking about that. I was thinking, did anybody else really shine bright on the defense? I guess we had several players that made individual plays, but did you remember any one person that had anywhere near the impact? For a player, um, Jaquis Guitar really caught my eye when he, uh, I believe it was, he came up the middle mm. and got the sack. Yeah. I mean, like I'm like, wow. And there, and there's, I can really, I can really understand the fact why people call him mini Cam Chancellor. You know, you know, I respect Cam Chancellor. I'll give him that. But Jaquis Guitar, that really caught my eye. But really what the main MVP for my estimation was Eric Mangini. You know, <laughs> last year la- last year we, we did not bring any pressure and it, it, the defense just felt dull. But now with Mangini, he's gonna bring in a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure to the quarterback, a lot of blitzes, but also balancing between that uh, blitzing and coverages. So I think that's key to success for us. Well said, bro, because uh, it's not boring at all out there now. Yeah, definitely not. I think I mean, what we got, like five sacks out there? Come on, man. Oh, and they were devastating sacks too. Teddy had no place to run, man. And, and yeah. you know, 
You forgot to mention one guy. I don't know if you've been thinking about him or not, but Aaron Lynch was a monster yesterday Aaron as well. Lynch. Uh, Aaron Lynch. Alden Smith may be a significant loss, but this guy, <laughs> I think, has the potential to be better. <laughs> to be better. You know what? I would have been afraid to say that, but I have a feeling. You see, because Alden, actually, his skills were predicated off of what Justin did. And they were the Smith brothers for a reason. If Justin took exactly. up all the blockers, that's what made Alden get in there kind of quickly and make a lot of a lot of stops and maybe he wouldn't yeah. have made it. To me, to me, Alden, he couldn't handle the the double pressure from the two old linemen. You know, there was a couple years ago where I was watching the Niners versus Seahawks and Justin Smith was out and Alden Smith got double teamed. He could not get past any of the Seahawks linemen. But if you put him in a one-on-one -on -one situation, he'll beat you, but... Now that Justin Smith was gone, if Alton was still on our team, uh, I, I don't think he would have been as good as people expected him. Maybe not getting like 20 sacks, but maybe like 10 sacks probably. Mm -hmm. But when I saw Aaron Lynch yesterday, I feel like he could he beat out some double teams. <laughs> you know, he, he didn't get the sack, but he, he was there. To, he was close to Teddy Bridgewater. Those, those, are, close. Called, those are called hurries. And yep. uh, he had several of them. Yep. We got Pittsburgh coming up this week now. Pittsburgh, I know they got a secondary that is really weak. The defense is kind of questionable as well. If we win this game, and I'm, the way I look at it now, at first I was thinking, oh, man, it's going to be tough. Do you know I think we will win that game? What is your thinking on that game? Okay, first of all, I think that uh, with Le'Veon Bell gone out of suspension and Martavis Bryant, that gives us a really good chance. If we can stop Adrian Peterson, who is arguably the best running back in the NFL, mm -hmm. and without them having Le'Veon Bell, we can most definitely stop their second string running back. Mm -hmm. And then the guy I'm really worried about, not really worried about, but who I'm, is giving me a little nurse is Antonio Brown, arguably the best wide receiver in the NFL. They've already but called him that. if you look closely uh, in yesterday's game, nobody passed a... Kenneth Ackers or Tremaine Brock's way. <laughs> Teddy Bridgewater had nowhere to pass except the tight end. Mm -hmm. He always checked it on the tight end because it's a mismatch between the middle linebacker and the tight end. He did not pass to Tremaine Brock or Kenneth Acker besides that uh, interception by Tremaine Brock. See. So I most definitely think our uh, cornerbacks can handle Antonio Brown. In combination, I, I, I'm feeling real good about it, especially with Antoine, Antoine Pathea back there as well as Eric yeah. Reed. I'm feeling good about that, man. People forget about uh, Antoine Pathea and Eric Reed. To me, they're one of the most underrated safety duos in the NFL. They, they can cover and they will lay the lumber on you. And nicely. They'll be reminded this weekend, before you go, you know what you got to do, right? Yep. <laughs> Let me give you the three, two, one. Niners! <laughs> Come on, Pittsburgh. All right, thanks, Rods. Thanks, JR. Oh, Niner fam, people are so cool. Ah, okay, we got Pittsburgh coming up this weekend, and just like this last game, I want you to join us. And when I say us, there's gonna be a whole lot of people immediately after the game as we go live. Now, here's what you do you need to get a Google account. If you don't already have a Google account, then get one because this weekend, it's going to be your key to getting in to the conversation. If you didn't know, I've got the instruction for you right here. All right, there is no excuse for you not to show up. I will be giving you the link long before the game is over. You check out Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and there it will be. All you need to do is click in and you are live with the 49er fam. So many people, and listen, I promise this week, we'll rotate people a little bit faster to give everybody a shot to come on in and say what they feel about the game that just took place. I promise, I really, I'm serious. You'll get in, don't give it up. And Niner fam, please, do not forget to subscribe. When I come back to look for you, I want you to know I'm coming. <laughs> I'll see you immediately after the game. Count me out. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, this is a crazy mother.